Hello, how are you? Well, I have to redo my video. I accidentally erased it. So here we go. Here we go again. I hope you watched my videos about the Jews and Zionism. My last video, um, I have a feeling it's already blocked, really. You can tell, you know, it like has so many numbers. People that watch my videos, usually they watch it and then it just stops. So that with my last video. So if you have not watched my last video, please do so about Christian Zionism. It's possible that you know everything about Christian Zionism and how terrible it is and how bad it is. I also placed a video on the bottom that you should be watching um, by somebody else that could get out there better than I did. But I want to talk about a different topic today. Um, I think I did mention this guy in my last video that did a great video about <laughs> Christian Zionism and how bad it is. And however, he then denied the rapture. And so today I really want to talk about that subject again. How in the world can people deny the rapture? It's just, for me, it's just unbelievable. What this guy said, of course, he did quote, or he did mention 1 Thessalonians 4 and the resurrection. But then he totally left out that this resurrection will also happen when there are still people alive. So saints that have not died yet. And I think that is a very important fact. When we go to 1 Corinthians 15, that's the same case. He says the same thing. It's not about the just the resurrection. It is also about those people that are still alive that are being changed in a twinkling of an eye and are caught up, and that means not gathered. Gathered is a process that takes longer time. Okay? Gathering things, right? But these people are being caught up. In other words, they're being rapidly snatched out. I understand people do not like to use the word rapture. Okay, then don't use it. I will use it because I get a lot of people actually that are rapture deniers then hopefully taking a look at what I have to say. I know the word rapture is not in the Bible, but people, I come, I'm German, so I'm used to reading the German Bible, and I know what Luther translated this word into. Okay, it's Hapazzo, it's a Greek word, hapazzo, and Luther translated it as entrückung, which is the same word that later on was what developed or they came up with the word rapture. Today, what we understand about rapture is exactly that word, hapazzo, a fast taken out. You can look it up. It is now part of the dictionary, the English dictionary. Look it up. What does rapture mean? A fast pulling out. In other words, the translators translated it as a catching up. A catching up. Again, go back, look at the Greek. Hapazzo is a fast snatching, taking out. Sometimes it even says a violent taking out. 
I don't think it's it's going to be violent. I think it's just going to be a sudden taking out the bride in a twinkling of an eye. You can see what happens is, and this is Paul. Paul also talked about he was looking forward to that. He said he would rather be clothed over with a new body than die. Because that's what it is. You will have a body and in twinkling of an eye, your body is going to be changed and you will be with the Lord. No angels coming to gather anybody up. Well, not for the saints. Now, I know I'm very aware Matthew 24, 31 is when it says the angels will gather the elect, but the elect are not the same thing as the saints. Absolutely not. So I don't know why people deny this catching up of, of the bride. In, a, in other words, those people that are still alive when Jesus returns, because that's what it is. Jesus returns, the resurrection happens, those people that are still alive will be changed in a minute, twinkling of an eye, and be snatched out and meet again the Lord in the air, just like, of course, the dead in Christ. That there's two things, and I'm going to read that today. Again, go to First Thessalonians 4, and we're going to look at that exactly what it says today. Really, people help me understand. Those people that find my videos because I'm going to use rapture, of course. Those people that read my, I mean, see that topic and they go flippy flippy because, oh no, rapture doesn't exist. No, the word didn't exist in the Bible, doesn't exist in the Bible. It does not mean the word doesn't exist. I can make up a word. I can make up a word like whatever, hoop, 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 and call it, that's the snatching out of the bride. I can do that. I can make up a totally groovy word, right? Whatever groovy, uh, let's use groovy. I'm going to say groovy means that uh, the the saints are being snatched out and changed in a twinkling eye. I can't do that. We just have to define it. The German word, like I said, is Entrückung. And that's very much the same as rapture. But look, let's look at the verses, and see what Paul is writing. So, people, we cannot have somebody come and say, oh, this is what it means. It's all about the resurrection. It's not all about the resurrection. It's not all. So let's look. We'll start with verse 13. Again, First Thessalonians 4.13. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. They sleep in death. So Paul says it's a sleeping. These people are sleeping. Now we have a count of these people that are sleeping, souls, in Revelation 6 in the fifth seal. These souls are under the altar. And under the altar, they seem to be somewhat awake, but I don't know if that's just <coughs> symbolic. No idea. But here it says, they rest, um, falling asleep in here. No, it says he. Uh, For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. They have fallen asleep. Why is he bringing them with him? I thought they're in the grave. Where are they sleeping? I just said they are sleeping under the altar in heaven. Okay, that's what we see in 
Revelation 6. This is why he is bringing them back. The souls are coming back with him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, and here he is addressing the alive people, who are left until the coming of the Lord. Again, it's the coming of the Lord. The coming of the Lord is the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is a thousand years. And right at the beginning of that thousand years, the Lord is coming, but only for his bride. Okay? At that time, he will not appear for everybody in the sky, like we see in Matthew twenty four thirty one, when he sends out the angels and gathers the people. No, this is not the same event. And many people are very, very confused about that. Very confused. Why is it not the same event? Because the event which is happening in Matthew 24, 31, is after the wrath of God. The sun went dark, the moon lost its shine, and the catastrophic event happened. And after the catastrophic events, Jesus appears in the clouds. This event is happening in the beginning of the wrath of God. Right when Jesus returns. And it will be during a time where people do not see him. He is coming during that time like a thief in the night. If people see him in, in the sky, he's not coming like a thief in the night. Everybody's going to see him. Hello, does that make sense or not? So please get that right. Okay? These people that are rapture deniers... They don't know. They have not studied it. They just throw it out. Oh, yeah, dispensationalism is wrong. Darby is wrong. Uh, Schofield was a scoundrel. Is that what you call a word, right? It's a bad guy. Keep criminal. And, of course, dispensationalists is wrong. They, all, they were criminals. They're liars. Yeah, I understand it. But don't throw everything out. Don't throw the scripture out. Go to the scripture. Learn what the scripture says. And don't throw the scripture out or half of the scripture. Okay? Don't do that. It says here clearly what it says. It says here that according to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive who are left until the coming of the Lord. That's at the beginning. That's at the before the wrath of God. Okay? That's at the beginning. Then after the beginning, when Jesus appears, or when Jesus doesn't appear really, he just is in the clouds and nobody sees him. And he resurrects the saints and he transforms the other saints that are still alive. And they meet in the air, and I'll tell you in a minute why they're meeting in the air. Okay? I'm going to go in the Old Testament and show you where God actually says go into your rooms. We know in um, John 14 that Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when I'm done, I'll come, come and pick you up again. That's not the time when he appears in the sky for everybody to see. That's when he comes back only for the bride people. Like in the um, the uh, uh, parable of the ten virgins. I hope you know that one. Matthew 25. So we are not proceeding the ones that have been falling asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet call of God. People, that trumpet call of God is the last trump, but not the last trump of the wrath of God. It's a different trump. 
The trumpet call of God is the trumpet call specifically for His return for His bride. You understand that? The wrath of God is separate. After He picks up His bride, and that trumpet call happened, and that's the last trump of the hundred drum- trumps during the Feast of Trumpets. Okay, difference. You need to understand that. Then there's going to be six more trumps, but those were、uh, then are according to the wrath of God. Different trumps. To understand that, so he's coming with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Here is talking about the rising of the dead. Okay, he's saying that he's bringing them back. With Jesus will bring them back with him. Who is that? That's their soul. Now he is talking about them getting a what? A body. That's when he describes it as a resurrection. That they will rise first. In other words, these people that he's bringing back with him will now get a transformed body. Are the graves going to open? I think that's just symbolism. The graves will not open. These people,、uh, that the souls will just get another body. Where is God getting、uh, <clears throat> the body from? Well, you you don't think God knows the DNA of every human being, and in a twinkle of an eye, He can put together a new body, a transformed body. He doesn't need anything from the grave. There's a lot of people t- sometimes they ask me, "Well, do you think it's okay for Christians to be cremated?" I don't see anything wrong. Okay, I don't see anything wrong. I mean, what about those people that accidentally get burned in a fire or whatever? I don't see anything wrong. God has the DNA of every person in His computer. And I'm going to say that again. Yeah, God has a computer. Of course, way much more developed than what we, the primitive chunk we have. And we're stored in the computer. Every one of our DNA is stored in the computer. Every animal, people, listen to me, because a lot of people, a lot of people ask me about animals. Where's my animal going? Is my animal going to be raptured? Every DNA of an animal is in God's computer, and He can create that animal at any time. Okay, don't have to worry about your animals. God will take care of them. He takes care of everything else. Why would He not take care of your animals? He takes care of every living thing, and every living thing is in His computer. So we don't have to worry about it. And then it says right here, so he will create a body for them, transform body. After that, now listen to this. After that, we who are still alive are left, and are left will be caught up. And here's that word. I could put raptured in there if you, you know if I wanted to. It's the same word. If I define raptured as caught up, then I can put it in there. If I define it that way, if I define "caught up" as "cuckoo," or in the German word "entrückt," then I put it in there, "entrückt," and our left will be entrückt together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. They're meeting the Lord in the air directly. It doesn't say anything about an angel coming and picking them up. You understand that? That's a different event.、It、has to be a different event. No angels are mentioned here. No angel that is collecting any of these saints is mentioned here. We are being transformed, and we meet the Lord in the air, and that's the end of it. Okay. So where's this place that we meet the Lord in the air? And what is there? Are we sitting on the clouds? What is in the air? Well, we are meeting. It's very simple. It's the new Jerusalem that Jesus is creating right now. 
It's the rooms that he's creating right now. Of course, he's bringing those back with him. He is preparing that place right now, most likely in a different dimension. Well, here we go. I was so rudely interrupt. And, you know, truthfully, I don't remember where I stopped. But let's go to verse 17 of First Thessalonians 4. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we're meeting in the air. Again, I think I was talking about what is in the air. Where are we going to meet? Are we sitting on the clouds? Well, I think it could be that there is exactly the building that Jesus is building right now. That's the rooms. The rooms that he's preparing. And we are all meeting there in those rooms. How do I know? Because I can make a connection to the Old Testament. And we're going to go there right now. We're going to go to Isaiah 26. I have mentioned Isaiah 26 before, and I'm going to go there today. And, and we're going to go to verse 19. Now, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, it may be very hard to understand what it is. It talks about, though, about the resurrection. 19. But your dead will live, Lord. Their bodies will rise. Let those who dwell in the dust wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning, and the earth will give birth to her dead. It's talking about here in some translations also about Isaiah rising, or being part of this resurrection. This is the resurrection of the saints the transformation, the saints getting a new body. It doesn't talk about the transformation here. It just talks about simply the resurrection. And then it goes in 20. It says, go to my people, enter your room. He is talking about the same people that he is addressing on the top here that were resurrected. He's telling those people that were resurrected, Go enter your rooms. People, what rooms is he talking about here? Did Isaiah know? He probably didn't. It was just nothing but a prophecy. And most of it, he probably didn't understand. Do we know what rooms he is talking about? Rooms for dead people. Yes, we should know. Because Jesus told the disciples in John 14, that he's going to prepare rooms for them. And when he is done with them, he will come back and pick them up. So here he said, go to my, go my people into your rooms, shut the door behind you, hide yourselves for a little while. Now, this is an interesting one. Why should they be hiding until the wrath has passed by? So here he is talking about a wrath, the wrath of God coming. So where, when is the wrath of God coming? Before or after the resurrection? It is after the resurrection. So after this event that Paul just described in 1 Thessalonians 4. So after that event, the wrath is coming. It says, see the Lord is coming out of his dwelling to punish the people of the earth for their sins. The earth will disclose the bloodshed on it. The earth will conceal its slain no longer. This is the wrath of God, people. And this wrath of God will come after Jesus picks up his bride. There is no doubt. Okay? No doubt. This is not 
at the end of the wrath of God, when the angels pick up, you know, when Jesus is seen in the sky or in the clouds. No, this is before. Before the wrath, there is a resurrection of the saints and a transformation of the still living. That's when First、uh, Thessalonians four happens. It also happens, and we don't see that in Matthew, Luke, or Mark, but it is happening before the wrath of God. That means before the sun goes dark. When we look at Matthew twenty-four, Luke twenty-one. And Mark thirteen, before that sun goes dark, that is the wrath of God, is when this resurrection happens, not after, but before. And then after this wrath of God, after they hid in their rooms, Jesus will be seen in the sky, in the clouds, and of course. The saints will be with him. Saints will be with him. So the angels don't will not collect the saints. They have to collect somebody else. Who are they collecting? It's the elect. And I believe these elect are the sealed ones in Revelation seven. The hundred and forty-four thousand sealed. Because they, even though they missed this event, should I say rapture? This event, the catching up of the bride, they missed it. Why? Because they didn't have the Holy Spirit. Again, look at Matthew twenty-five. These are the foolish virgins. They missed it. Hopefully, they are smart enough to figure out what happened and continue to follow Jesus. Then they will be picked up by the angels. Why is that? Because the bride is first fruit. See, during the Hebrew harvest, there is always the first fruit. The first fruit, the master himself picks the best fruit, or grain, or whatever it is. Because those people are,、um, they are chosen for God in the temple. And then the angels, who are, you know, the servants, will do the general harvest. And that is when the angels gather the elect, and they throw the bad ones into the fire. That's the harvest, the general harvest, where so many people say, "Oh, this is when the resurrection is," and this is no. You need to understand that it, there is a harvest of the first fruit, and that the master himself will collect the first fruit, and that's when he does in First Thessalonians four. The master himself will snatch out. The first fruit. He will bring back the souls. They get a body, and then he'll snatch out whoever is left over, the believers. And he will take them where in the hupa. I say that so many times too. The hupa, and I hope you understand this tradition of the Hebrew wedding. That the bridegroom and the bride will go into the hupa, where they have intercourse for the first time, and the bride has to show herself that she is a virgin. You can read Revelation fourteen for that too. Talk about virgins, first fruit, everything is in there. That is the rapt the the raptured. I'm going to read the raptured. The Resurrected and take out, taken out bride, right there, which I call the rapture. These people were taken out or transformed, whatever. Read First Thessalonians four. It's what it is, people. 
And when we don't understand that, how in the world do we have the Holy Spirit? Don't understand it. Yes, we can say all kinds of factual things. We can read all kinds of Bible verses because we can look those up, you know, on a, in a, on the Internet, see what fits what. And yeah, we can do that. But if we reject the blessed hope, somebody actually gave me a nice verse. I need to find it in Titus. Titus 2. Yeah, Titus 2.13. For the grace of God, and actually I'm starting with 12. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. Ha! All. All means including Gentiles and Jews. That's all people. For the grace of God has appeared that offers, and that's Jesus, that offers salvation to all people. That's Titus. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. People, listen, it's not just your faith. He's purifying a people that his own people, eager to do what is good. These are then the things you should teach, encourage, and rebuke with all authority. Oh, my goodness. I had a German lady telling me, oh, I, I, am, I like your channel, but you're aggressive. I have a hard time dealing with the aggressiveness. What does it say? Encourage and rebuke with all authority. Do we have authority to rebuke? Yes, the Holy Spirit is actually giving us that authority, and is using us to rebuke. Do not anyone despise you, no matter what you are, if you're a woman or a man. Don't let anybody despise you. But let the Holy Spirit move through you and let him speak through you. But why I was reading it, or this guy, lady, said it to me, is because tells you so clearly who gave himself to us for them. Uh, wait, 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 no, wait a minute. We're going to the um, the appearing while we uh, wait for the blessed hope. That's our blessed hope. Who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness. No, it says uh, blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow, this is a good one. Many times people ask me, where is a, a verse that shows that Jesus is God? The appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Are there two people that are appearing or is there one person appearing? And I believe it's one person and that's God and the Savior Jesus Christ. I think it's one person. Okay. God's going to appear through Jesus Christ, just like he became flesh through Jesus Christ. God can appear or is, has appeared through Jesus Christ and will appear again through him. I'm going to finish up with that. People, I want to really thank that person that shared that. I think I even pinned it to the front because I thought that was a great verse. It's excellent, excellent, excellent. Yes, we are waiting for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. And again, who died for all of us. 
People, there is not a separate salvation for the Jews. We have to also preach the same gospel to the Jews. Not, oh yeah, you can be saved under your old covenant, under these uh, false uh, um, pagan rituals which are, you know, the, the, the sacrifices or the temple or these things. No, we have the same salvation. That's Titus, okay? Do some research who Titus was. Anyways, I'm coming to an end. And I think it was a letter to Titus from, from Paul. Anyways, let the Holy Spirit guide you always.